let us start. So today we will uh, discuss uh, design of clutches. Right? So actually as you know, uh, the clutch is uh, an element, right, which is allowed uh, operator to connect or disconnect the source of the power transmission system, right, at the wheel, right. So this is how we will first uh, define the clutch. Right. So as uh, we have already defined right clutches and element right which is um, to connect or disconnect the source of the power Sir, your voice is low, sir. Okay. So now am I audible clearly or? Yes, sir. Okay. So the source of the power transmission system at the wheel of operator. Right? So it is generally used uh, to connect the driving shaft to the gearbox, right? So it is uh, allowing operator to connect or disconnect the source of power transmission system, right? So uh, uh, generally coupling clutches and brakes, couplings, clutches and brakes, they are almost uh, similar. In case of coupling, there is a rigid uh, bond between the components, right? Like shafts are joined with couplings. So once they are uh, joined with the help of couplings, it cannot be detached, right? But in case of this uh, clutches and brakes, the two elements are engaged and disengaged at the wheel of operator, right? So as we already discussed brake, uh, if we talk about brake, the general construction is uh, you are having a rotating drum, right? And uh, in case of that shoe brake, you are having that shoe or block, right? So what happens in case of uh, this uh, brake is, uh, in case of uh, this brake, Initially, uh, this drum is having motion, right? Rotatory motion, right? While uh, this shoe is uh, stationary, right? Now, and in case of or after application of brake, if you discuss about the final stage, then in that case, drum and this shoe. Right, this both are uh, standstill after the application of brake. Right. Similarly, if you discuss about the clutch, then in case of clutch also, if you discuss about the initial and final condition, then uh, what happens in case of clutch is initially uh, you are having one driving member, right, one driven member. So driving member will have this rotatory motion while driven member will be stationary. But after the engagement of uh, this clutch or after the application of this clutch, what is going to happen is both driving and driven member will have motion. That is both will have motion. So this is how uh, we are having uh, this uh, basic things regarding this coupling clutches and now there are various uh, types of uh, clutches, right? So if you go for Excellent, sir. yes, in case of clutch, uh, initially it is in engaged position. Uh, uh, yes, right. Initially it will be engaged, right? So driving and the one both will be rotating initially. No, 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 no. Once uh, 
see, uh, there is a, what we can say that uh, this uh, driving shaft is going to be uh, connected to uh, your uh, driven shaft once you uh, apply that, uh, what you can say, that uh, once you apply the gear, right, if you talk about uh, the uh, your automobile, then there is a neutral gear. So in neutral gear, actually, uh, there is no transmission of tor torque or anything. Once you shift the gear, once you go to the first gear, then there will be transmission of torque will start from driving shaft to the driven shaft. And in that case, there will be a driving shaft uh, in motion and the driven shaft will be at a certain uh, stationary condition or other condition, right? So that your uh, driving shaft will uh, take your driven shaft to the same speed at which it is rotating, right? Okay. So engage position we are taking as final. Yeah, see, whenever you are uh, applying that uh, clutch, means whenever you are pressing that uh, clutch uh, pedal, at that time, disengagement takes place. Right? Then only it will allow you to shift the gears in your gearbox. Yes. Are you getting what I am saying? Yes, sir. Right. So here, uh, as you are seeing, we will discuss this uh, square jaw clutch and single plate clutch, right? So, if you see, we will uh, move we will be more focusing on this single plate clutch, right? So as you can see in this single plate clutch, it is in this engaged condition. So during this, uh, the power will be transmitted from this driving to driven shaft. But when you are shifting the gears, this will be uh, disengaged, right? Then only you will be able to shift the gears, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So now in case of this uh, types of uh, clutches, you are having this positive contact clutch. Right? And this friction clutches. Now this electromagnetic clutch. and uh, this fluid clutches and links. So we will be actually more focusing on this uh, friction clutches, right? And in case of this uh, positive uh, control clutch, there is uh, so this square jaw clutch, spiral jaw clutch. Right, and the centrifugal clutch, all these are, uh, sorry, uh, two the clutch will be here. Uh, so, there will be the uh, frictional clutches. So, in this uh, frictional clutches, you will have this single and multi plate clutch. Then, this cone clutch and centrifugal clutch. Right. So, in this uh, given figure, uh, you are having this uh, square jaw clutch, which is positive displacement tap, and this single plate clutch, which is based on this uh, frictional clutches, right? It will be a frictional lining, as it is mentioned. Right? Generally, asbestos is used as frictional uh, material. Right. So, here, in case of this uh, uh, square jaw clutch, this uh, square jaw clutch is in this positive displacement clutch. So as you can see, here you are having this kind of arrangement of this jaw and socket. So when it will get engaged, it will work without any slip. But the limitation of this kind of clutch is it can be having engagement or disengagement when both the shafts are at rest or both are running uh, almost at the same speed. Then only this uh, will be uh, working right, this kind of uh, positive uh, displacement clutches. But in case of the fitness clutches, uh, uh, any uh, speed of driving and driven shafts are allowed. Right? So, this is how most of the times the fitness clutches are being used. Right. So, now if we go for this work transmitting capacity of uh, this uh, frictional clutches, then as you can see, 
in this uh, figure, uh, it is mentioned that uh, what are the different parameters, like this D is outer diameter of friction disk, and that small d is inner diameter of friction disk, P is the intensity of pressure at radius R, and capital P is force, right? and this MT is torque transmitted by the clutch. Here this frictional force is shown on that particular element which is defined in this figure. Right, so if uh, first you will consider this elemental area at radius r and of this dr in the radial direction, then that elemental area will be as uh, this 2 pi r dr. Right? And the actual force will be given by pressure into this area, right? This two pi r dr. So uh, once you have uh, this force, then you can uh, calculate this frictional force and frictional torque, right? So from this you can have frictional force. See, these are all acting on that element only, right? So this frictional force will be this mu p to this 2 pi r d r and this frictional torque frictional torque we are getting where we can multiply with this same this right so this is how uh, you will have the frictional force and torque now, here we have considered only that uh, simple element. So, basically, as you are seeing, uh, looking in this figure, this disk is having frictional lining in uh, this particular area, right? Which is mentioned with this uh, small d to capital D. Right? If you consider this as uh, inner diameter and this as outer diameter, right? then this frictional lining is provided in this area as mentioned here. So, what we have done is we have considered all this frictional force and torque for this element only right, for now. So, in order to get total force and total frictional torque, we need to integrate over uh, this area, right? So, let us integrate that in order to get that total force P, right? This is total force P. Right. So, as you can see here, this will be from that small d by d to capital D by d. Basically, from the radius to outer radius, that will be the total area. Right? This is 2 pi of the d r will be here, right? So, and then into the d r into d. Right, now here in this uh, particular integration, this 2 pi is, uh, what you can say, uh, constant, right? So, here you will have this minus e by 2 plus e by 2. You see here uh, we are integrating uh, this action motion. this. So, in that we are not having this, uh, uh, this particular friction coefficient, right? So, we can remove that. So, here we are having this total action force as uh, this 2 pi in integration that small d by d capital D by 2 dr dr. It will be the total force. Now, if you go for that frictional torque, excuse me, sir. Sorry, huh? How, how, how it minus d by two? It is not minus d by two. It is d by two. It is not uh, minus d by two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this m t is uh, this frictional torque. Now we are going to integrate. So if you integrate it from d by d by d, then it is c p by r d by r. 
So we are also able to help the constants to find new and video video and digest uh, expression. Right? So uh, this is the total friction torque and total axial force, right? This equation will be right. So uh, we will use this equation, right? Now, for further calculation of uh, this actual force and uh, this frictional torque in different conditions, right? Because uh, you, you will be able to calculate this by considering two different theory, as it is mentioned here, uniform pressure theory and uniform real theory. Right? So now, what is this? We will go one by one. Right? So if we first go for this uniform pressure theory, then as you can uh, see in this figure, the pressure distribution is assumed to be same across the area as it is mentioned. So generally for new clutch, this theory applies, right? So uh, when uh, the clutch is uh, almost new and it has just started uh, its function, then uh, almost uh, this force applied or pressure applied will be uh, same throughout the area. Right. Well, after some particular duration or after some life of this uh, clutch, it is uh, going to be worn out. Right. So uh, at that time, that uniform wear theory is going to be applied. So, which is mentioned in this particular video, we will discuss that uniform wear theory also. Right. So here, first, let us discuss this uniform pressure theory. It is generally applied for this new clutch. So now, if we apply this. In calculating this uh, total action force and total frictional torque right so this equation one we have written is like this right two pi that p r d r now what we are considering in uniform pressure theory is this pressure is constant so you can simply take out that pressure so that uh, your uh, this R D R will be integrated from this uh, small d by 2 to capital D by 2. So, here you will get this 2 pi p R square by 2, right? D by 2, 2 by 2. So, it will give you uh, this 2 you can take out right 2 from P by 2 and R square will be the D square minus D square by 4 right so basically you will get that pi P right by 2 D square minus D square by 4 this is your total force in case of uniform pressure theory. Similarly, you can also calculate the frictional torque in case of this uniform pressure theory. That is, uh, this we have written right, this is by u, d by 2, d by 2, p r square d r. Here you will take out that pressure also because we are considering it as constant. Right, so here this two pi by p and directly putting this dq minus dq right, by 8 right and uh, this will be actually this d by 2 and this d by 2 will be this uh, dq minus dq by 8 but in that uh, integration it will be r cube by 3 so that 3 I am putting here right so if you do further uh, uh, what say, simplification then it will be this i u p upon 12 this d q minus d q now if uh, you divide this equation, let us write this equation as equation A, 
this is B. So if you divide uh, this MT by P, right, then you will have this pi in P by L dQ minus dQ into this 4 divided by pi P d square minus d square. Right. So this will give you this mu by 3 dq minus dq or d square minus d square. Right. So uh, this particular MT can be now represented in terms of terms of this actual force as this right will be by 3 d cube minus d cube over d square minus d square. Right. So this is how you are having this uh, frictional torque and actual force in case of uniform pressure theory. This P is uh, actual force and right? don't confuse with that pressure. Now, once you have an uh, idea about this uniform pressure theory, you can also go for uniform wear theory. So, when this uh, clutch worn out, what happens is this product of P into R will remain constant. So, basically, what it says is this P is proportional to 1 upon R. It means uh, that in case of this uh, disc clutch, that maximum pressure will be at minimum radius, right? So at this minimum radius, there will be maximum pressure and that uh, this maximum radius pressure will be minimum. Like that you are having uh, this uh, particular distribution of pressure. So once you consider uh, the speed R is constant, then uh, this V here is actually proportional to the frictional burn. This here is proportional to frictional work. So frictional work is basically nothing but this frictional force into rubbing velocity. So this frictional force into rubbing velocity. Yeah, this is frictional force. And this is rubbing velocity. Now from this, if you consider this n is uh, n is also constant and this mu is also constant. So basically, this will give you that uh, V R is proportional to this product P into R, right? Now, so once you have uh, this idea, then uh, what you can do is you can uh, derive the redshift force and frictional torque for this uniform V R theory, right? But what we are doing is as we know this P into R is constant, we are assuming that uh, maximum force, let us say P in, is at this D by 2, which is the uh, least radius. So basically, this P R product can be replaced with this P A into D by 2. So this will do while deriving uh, action force and frictional torque in the single plate clutch. Right, so let us say that P is again as we know this P pi. Sir? Yes. This will you repeat above above statement? Yeah. So this one right as PR is constant, what we are doing is we are considering that maximum pressure P A is acting at the least radius D by two. So in our integration, this PR we are going to replace with this PA into D by 2. Are you getting? P, so PA is maximum? Yeah. Okay. So here what uh, we are going to do is we are going to replace this PR with PA into D by 2 because now this PA and D by 2 both are constant. So I am taking it out from the integration. So here your integration will be simple, right? This pi P A D into this D by 2 minus D by 2 plus D minus D by 2. Correct? Is it okay? 
Hello. Did you get this one? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, as you have derived this actual force, let us do for this frictional torque. So here also you will have this two pi mu, and here to be this equal to equal to the R square dr. Right. So here what you will have is this two pi mu. E A into D by two will be for uh, this P into R. Still you will have this R dr. Right. So here you will go for uh, this integration R square by two. So basically this is D square minus D square by four into that R square by two. I am putting here. Right. So this will uh, give you pi two e a d by eight right into d square minus d square. So this is how you are having your frictional torque. Now again, if you consider this as c and this as d, and if you divide this d with c. As we have done earlier, this d by t, then it will give you this mu plus d by four, right? So I'm not uh, deriving it, but you will find this if you uh, divide this equation d by equation c. So this frictional force in terms of a frictional torque in terms of this axial force will be given by this, right? So now, if we uh, go and simplify this frictional torque, right, in both the cases, then let us define with this simple expression that frictional torque is mu into p into r. Right, r f is this uh, effective radius. So in both the cases, r f is different, right? Uniform pressure theory, uniform gear theory. This is uniform gear theory. Right, it will be d plus d by four. But in case of uniform pressure theory, it will be given by this expression. So clear, this one? Yes or no? Hello. Yes, sir. So now we can calculate uh, this example. A plate clutch consists of one pair of contacting surfaces. The inner and outer diameters of the friction disc are 100 and 200 mm respectively. The coefficient of friction is 0.2 and the coefficient intensity of friction is 1 meter per mm square. Assuming we from here we will calculate the power transmitting capacity of the clutch. At 750 rpm. So can you calculate this one? And in the this uh, next example, it is uniform pressure theory. So I guess both are same only. So can you try this example? Hello. Yes, sir. So please uh, calculate and let me know what are you getting as your answers. Just you can note down the given data, right? That capital D is given as 200 ohm. Small D is given as 100 ohm. The coefficient of friction is 0.2. Permissible intensity of pressure means that whatever we are considering. Maximum pressure P A one newton per one square, and this angle is say P R P. So now, can you try this?
First, we need to uh, consider uniform wear theory. So can anyone tell which equation you are going to use to calculate this force? Hello. We have derived all these equations, right? Just now. Yes, sir. Ah, so, what, which equation you are going to use here? Pi into P into D. Mm -hmm. Capital D minus small d by D. Yeah, correct. So, this will give you uh, this force. So, you have all the data with you, right? You have this pi ratio is given as 1, small d is 100, capital D is... 200 right? so this will give you this action force right so what will be your answer here eighteen point five kilowatt no. can anyone else answer this question? Hello. Our it's 1.67 kilowatt. 1.67. Actually, no, it is straight forward. Now this pi is in terms of 3.14 something divided by 2. 15.8 into 10 raised to 4, right? Mm -hmm. This is 100 and this also 100. Right, so it is straight forward. 15.7. Yeah, it will be around this one five seven point nine six Is it correct? Yes, yes. sir. Right, so once you get this force, then you can go for that torque. We have written the torque in terms of this force, right? If you remember this pi P by four D plus D, correct? For uniform V R. Yes, sir. So this point two into this one by seven of seven point nine six by four into two hundred plus hundred. So this will give you answer. Can okay, anyone? This is four. Yes. Can you even answer this? Um, 235.619 Sorry? 235.619 235.619 So you have converted it to Newton meter, huh? Yes, sir. Newton meter. Now you need to calculate uh, the power transmitting capacity. So how will you calculate that? T equal to two pi n t by sixty. Yeah. So two pi n t by sixty. This torque is this only, right? Empty. Correct. Right. 18.505 
Kilo volt, right? Yes, sir. Kilo. Okay. So once you have this, now we can go for uniform layer theory. Sorry, uniform pressure theory. This is for uniform ah uh, layer theory. Let's see. Let's see. Now for uniform pressure theory. For uniform pressure theory, you will have the force as I think I think E square minus E square. Right? So it is PA is one, right? So this one. So what is this capital P? Anyone? Is it this much? Anyone got this? Two three five six one point yeah. nine four. Correct, correct. So now for uh, this uniform pressure theory, this frictional torque with the help of uh, this axial force can be calculated from this relation. Right? So we are also we have all the things with you. Mu is point two p. You have calculated. You have inner and outer diameter. So can you tell me what is this frictional torque? Because as we know in practice, uniform pressure theory cannot be applied throughout the operational life of clutch. It is going to get worn out, right? So generally, this uniform pressure theory is applied, right? So which gives this what is the conservative value of power transmitter? Now, once you have idea about this, then you can calculate this also, right? Let us see. We have an automatic plate clutch consists of two pairs of uh, contacting surfaces with an asbestos friction line. The torque transmitting capacity of the clutch is 515 meter. The coefficient of friction is 0.25. The permissible intensity of pressure is 0.5 newton per m square. Due to space limitations, the outer diameter of the uh, friction disc is fixed as 250 mm. Using uniform uh, wear theory, calculate the inner diameter of the friction disc and spring force required to keep the clutch in an engaged position. So can we try this? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. 
So here uh, the data are given here. Right? For how to calculate? Kindly mute yourself. First, you can note down the given data right here. If you note down the given data, the dot transmitted is 550 newton meter. Then this capital D is 250 mm. U is 0.25, PE is 0.5 meter per square. Number of pair of surface is is equal to 2. So, actually, whatever equations we have derived is for only one pair of uh, contact, right? So, here we will uh, consider the torque as mt by 2 instead of this 550. Uh, this we will consider 550 by 2, right? So, this 550 by 2 means 275. So, for calculating my uh, given or asked data you will consider torque as 275 right? and you need to use uniform wear theory in which mt is given by pi u equal d by 2 sorry d by e this pi u into d square minus d square so in this equation you are having all the data here is 275 into 10 plus 2, 3 is pi e, mu is 0.25, pa is 0.5, we don't have this to be. So, now, uh, actually, when you solve this equation, right, with uh, trial and error, you will find that. Uh, you will find it is a cubic equation, so you will have three different roots, right? So, but from that uh, different roots, you can consider one of the physical group, right? Which will be D is equal to 174 mm. Okay, so do you want to generate that uh, cubic equation and you need to try to solve it? Hello, yes, yes. sir. So, please try and tell me whether you are getting one of the root is near to this one. Capital D you are having as uh, 250 mm. You will have to be equation in terms of this uh, small d. It is there, right, directly in your scientific calculator. Or you can even put this 174 once you generate that uh, cubic equation and you can check whether it is uh, satisfying it or not.
sir uh, we can we can't solve cubic equation by gate calculator mm, maybe yes then you need to go for this trial and error right or if in uh, yes. gate this question come then how to proceed sir in that case i guess uh, Will be trial and error, or in that case they may avoid this uh, kind of uh, right. Uh, or we can say questions or this kind of uh, parameter, so that it will not be that much. Uh, because otherwise it will be very time consuming, right? So for now, if you have scientific calculator, at least you can try with that. Yes, sir. One seventy four current. Right. So with scientific calculator, at least you are getting this answer, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So once you get this uh, particular small d, then you can calculate the actual force in case of uh, this uniform linear theory. So for that, we are having this I P A d by two d minus t. Okay. So now we are working on the data with you. P A is 0.5, small d capital D is already with you. 250 and 174, right? So what will be this actual force which is required to make engage this pair of this case? What is this force? Anyone? Is it around this ten thousand feet distance? Anything almost? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So here, uh, if we go for the multiply clutch, then in this multiply clutch, actually you will have a pair of discs on driving and driven shaft, right? And here, uh, whatever equations we have derived, we need to multiply that uh, equation of the torque with number of discs, right? So, in case of uniform pressure criteria, uniform pressure. Your frictional torque can be represented with this mu p z by three. Mu p z by three into the t q minus t q by d square minus d square. Similarly, for uniform wear theory. This mt can be given by this mu p z by 4 d minus d. Your z is number of plate. And how will you calculate this uh, number of plate? Or actually, this number of pairs of contacting surfaces, right? Not uh, this. Okay, because the number of plate will be different than the number of these contacting pairs. We will see how we can calculate the number of contact pairs. So as it is given that number of disc on this driving and driven shaft may be Z1 and Z2 respectively, right? But uh, in case of this number of contacting pairs, It is uh, given by this Z1 plus Z2 minus 1. Right. Why? Because there will be uh, one less, uh, uh, what we say, contacting pair right, in comparison to total this uh, number of this. Right. So, as you can see in the given example, you are having three disks 
on uh, the set A, right, and two discs on the set uh, B. It means it is driving and driven shafts A and B. So when you make this pair of contact, then it will be one less than the total number of discs, right? So as you can see, this it is simple solution, right? So this is how this number of contact in pair will be given with this element, this is two minus one, right? Now from this, you can try this uh, example, right? Uh, an oil must multi disc clutch with cork sheet as the frictional material is used on a scooter engine. The friction disc of such a clutch is shown in the figure. Now the torque transmitted by the clutch is 10 Newton meter. The coefficient of friction is 0.2. Permissible pressure is 0.1 Newton per mm square. Inner and outer diameter are 65 mm. Then uh, there are radial slopes on the frictional surface for the circulation of the coolant, which reduces the effective friction area. Now to account for the slopes, the number of protective surfaces can be uh, increased by 5% assuming uniform wear theory calculate the required number of contacting surfaces right so now uh, here also uh, you can first note down the given data right so what is given is this mt is given as 10 newton meter then this capital D as T5 mm, this small d as 65 mm, this mean is 0.2, and this big A as 0.1 Newton per mm square. Okay, so once you have this uh, 2 and data, right? Then uh, this operating force uh, you can calculate. Right? Operating force is in case of this uniform wear theory is known Pa d by 2 is d minus d. So from all this given data, what will be this force? Can anyone tell? Hello. Can anyone tell? Sorry? Kundeet point five no tam. This will be pi into point one. One point nine five sixteen pi into Minus sixty five. So can you tell me now? One point nine five. How come it will be one point nine five? Here it is uh, thirty by two, that is fifteen. So sixty five into fifteen into point one into pi. How can it be one point five? Is it pi or mu? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's pi. Yeah, sorry. Now you can tell me. Yeah, what is the answer? Anyone? 06.3 Yeah, it is almost around this 306.3 Now once you know this force, then you can apply this uh, torque equation which we have just now noted for the number of this Z which is given by this unit.
consider the effect of this radial slot as it is mentioned and so z will be almost coming down to principal base so here as it is mentioned here that contacting surface as you can see here contact uh, this to account for this uh, radial slot the number of contacting surfaces can be increased by 5% So, considering that uh, radial slot, is that uh, final will be 1.05 times the Z we have calculated. So that will come around 4.2 billion, right? So you can go with number of surfaces as five. Is it okay? Sir, we should go for higher value. Yes, yes, yes. Because you need to transmit that much amount of torque. If you go for less amount, then that much amount of torque will not be transmitted. Are you getting? Yes. So now, once you have this idea, then let us do of another kind. A multi-disc clutch consists of five steel plates and four bronze plates. The inner and outer diameter of the friction disc is 75 and 150 mm, respectively. Coefficient of friction is 0.1, and the intensity of uh, pressure on friction lining is 0.3 newton per mm square. Assuming B from B, I calculate the required force to engage the clutch and power transmitting capacity at 750 mm. So now I guess uh, I will not tell you anything. Can you calculate it uh, by your own? Will try. Yeah, please tell me what are the answers, right? Final answers. I'm giving you two minutes of time. I will tell you everything. Is the force two point six five kilometer? Yeah, correct. Force two point two point six five kilometer.
Did you get the power transmitting capacity? The number of contact in surface is eight. Yes, correct. Then what will be your answer for the power transmitting capacity? Is it 9.4 kilowatt? No. Correct, correct. So here if I first write the given data then it is 151. Right? Then this D is 75 mm. Now is given as 0.1. This angle is given as 750 rpm. This angle is given as 0.344 square. That number of steel plate Z1 is 5, that bronze plate Z2 are 4. Right, so contacting surface is Z is Z2 plus Z2 minus 1, that will be A. Now, if you first calculate the actual force, then it is at pi dA d by 2 is d plus, sorry, d minus d. Right? So, this will give you almost 2.65 kilometer. Like this, it's correctly pointed out. Then you can calculate this frictional torque from this force, actual force, that would be pi over T plus T. So it will uh, come around 119.2. Correct? Newton meter. Yes or no? Yes. Then it will be 2 pi n by 16 into 20. Right, this power which is almost 9.4 kilowatt right so now once you have all this uh, idea with you you can try this which is going to be 2006 right a disk clutch is required to transmit 5 kilowatt at 2000 rpm the disk has a friction lining with a coefficient of friction 0.25 more radius of the Friction lining is equal to 0.25 mm. Assume we from contact pressure of 1 meter pass with the value of outside radius of friction lining. I guess you can try this one. First, you need to calculate the friction torque right because power is provided so 2 pi 1 t 16 power is 5 kilo so 2 pi and is 2000 to this torque right which is nothing but the breaking torque mt so what do you do so this torque Can anyone? Torque is 23.87 Newton. Correct. It will be 23.87 Newton. It is nothing but the damping. So, now once you have damping with you, you can write this MT in terms of uh, that actual force, right? So what is that uh, equation in case of this uh, uniform uh, last? Uniform contact, right? Uniform contact pressure. So what will be empty in case of uniform contact pressure? Is 
say pi mu 2 by 12 d cube minus d cube. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Pi mu by, by 12 d by cube minus d cube. D cube, minus d cube. Here, this p is the uniform pressure of one meter per second. So is the answer A? Yes, correct. Answer is A with the So if you put all the given data, it's going to be 0.87 meter meter to meter mm. This correct answer is A. So if you uh, put all the given data, this pi mu, mu is 0.25, this p is 1 mega pascal, so this is 1 to 1 square on So d is the capital D and small d. So we need to calculate outside radius. So, so small d will be 50, right? Because radius is provided, correct? Radius is provided as 25. So I will multiply it with 2. Is it okay? Yes, sir. So now this d will be this 78.8 right yes, so r we will be getting as 39.4 correct yes okay so let us go to the next one sir so how 12 came there actually it is uh, this, in terms of this pressure, right, it is not in terms of uh, that, uh, axial force. When you write it in terms of axial force, at that time it will be that uh, mu into capital P by 3, then d cube minus d cube, of, means capital D cube minus small d cube upon capital D square minus small d square. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So here now a clutch is outer linear diameter is 140 mm. Assuming uniform pressure of 2 mega coefficient of friction uh, will be 0.4 torque transfer capacity. It is a straightforward problem, right? Hello? Yes, sir. So, can you tell me the answer? This empty in this, whatever we have just now written. This will be the same will be there, right? Is it correct? Yes, it will be almost about uh, this one to six meter meter. Okay. So the next is a disc clutch with a single friction surface is coefficient of friction equal to point three. The maximum pressure which can be imposed on friction material is one point five meter pascal. After diameter of the clutch plate is 200 mm and its internal diameter is 100 mm, assuming uniform linear theory for the clutch plate, the maximum torque that can be transmitted is. So you can calculate this also, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, the given data is. mu is given as. 
maximum pressure is this pascal outer diameter is 200 inner diameter is 100 So now you can calculate. 530.14. Correct. Torque transmitted. Mm -hmm. Almost around the 530. So which equation we are going to use here? Pi by 8. T into D. Sorry. 1 by 8. Pi into so this pi mu T A T by A, right? Yes. Sir. D square minus D square, right? Yes. So in this, all the data is given, right? So it will give you answer around pi thirty. Correct. Right. right. All of you are getting this. Yes, sir. Okay. Then next, a single plate clutch is a friction disc with inner and outer radii of. 20 mm and 40 mm respectively the friction lining and the disc is made in such a way that the coefficient of friction mu varies radially as mu is equal to 0.01 r where r is in mm the clutch needs to transmit a friction torque rating 25 uh, km mm as per the uniform pressure theory now, the pressure in the pascal on the disc is so here you need to think right because here your mu is varying with respect to r so what uh, we have written for that uh, uniform pressure theory in case of this uh, frictional torque you remember which we got this in pi r dr was the area right and that Into e mu. is the pressure so this is the force so we have multiplied it with uh, coefficient of friction so the frictional force and then again we have multiplied it with r to get the torque right this is what we have done correct Right yes, for sir. that elemental area. Now we have then uh, integrated it from small d by 2 to capital D by 2. So here pressure is constant, right? Uniform pressure theory. So 2 pi p will be constant, right? And this mu r square d r will be there. Is it correct? Why mu has come inside this integration? Because mu is very because mu is given as 0 0.01 r. Are you getting it? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So this is how you will get this to P. We can here write that R i and r o also right? in place of this small d by 2 and capital d by 2 because here in uh, your problem statement uh, what is given is radius only right inner and outer radius sorry uh, your answer what answer you are getting 0 0.5 mp yes correct correct 0.5 mp is correct answer. So this 0.01 mp taken out, then R Q T R 
So this will by e into point is one r is to four and four and here twenty to forty r i in r of so once you uh, simplify this what is p so p is that is to be found out sir it is to be calculated sir so this p you need to calculate mt is provided right 18.85 km and okay so we have to do by p point is one and p is to four minus p is to four and four and this mt is Is it correct? Which will give you this pressure? Yes. So this pressure will be 0.5 mg. And all of you are getting the same. Yes, sir. Okay. Then let us go to the last question. In a disc type axial clutch, the rotational contact takes place within an annular region with outer linear diameter so 50 mm and 50 mm respectively. An axial force F1 is needed to transmit the torque by a new clutch. However, to transmit the same torque, one needs an axial force F2 when the clutch wears out. If uh, contact pressure remains uniform during operation of a new clutch while the wear is zoomed to be uh, Uniform for an old clutch, the coefficient of friction does not change, and the ratio of the light to is. So here, how can you approach? Force by uniform pressure going from there. Yeah. First, uh, you have calculate uh, the force for uniform pressure, and then uniform wear, and then you need to take ratio. Correct. Yes, sir. So calculate and let me know what are you getting. The so wear is assumed to be uniform means. It means you need to uh, consider that uniform wear. Oh. Yeah. So we have actually uh, written that uh, equation in terms of that mu W R. Remember. And then RF was for uniform pressure and uniform wear, if you recall it. Are you getting? Yes, sir. Right, so this, uh, this W will also vary along with this RF. So for MT1, if you are considering uniform pressure, then M, the new W1 RF1. Okay, let us say uniform pressure. Then MT2 will be new W2 RF2. Let us say uniform VF. Right? So, what you need to do is you need to take the ratio of W1 by W2. RF1 so, and RF2 is 0.8. So, sorry? The answer will be 0 0.8572. Uh -huh, it is almost around 0 0.871. So, can you tell me what is W1 RF1 by RF1 2 R2? Right. Then, actually, uh, this both are equated, right? So, let me write it as equal to 1. So, Basically, W1 RF1 is equal to W2 RF2, right? So, from that, this W1 and W2 is, is RF2 by RF1. So, what is RF2 for uniform wear? What is the radius? 75, sir. Uh, where, where it is mentioned? Oh, for actually for uh, that RF1, is it uh, this uh, 